Okay, so I'm going to now discuss the um, implementation of quantum, quantum teleportation by, um, by a black hole. And I'm gonna to try to do that. This is a bit of an experiment. I'm gonna to try to do that using the black hole. Um, so yeah, we've gone a long way in terms of impressiveness from black holes that emit more power than the entire rest of the universe, like some for discussion. Um, but this is actually, in, in my opinion, this is the good stuff. This is why um, this is why people like me care about, care about black holes. I want to you know share with that with you guys honestly. Okay. So here's the idea. What we want to do is we want to do quantum teleportation. We want to accomplish it instead of using a pair of entangled code books. We want to accomplish it using a pair of black holes, entangled black holes. Quantum teleportation, the entangled code books are something you have to share in advance. And they're a resource that allows you to do the task, allows you to do the quantum teleportation. The question, first question we should ask is what type of a resource is associated to a pair of entangled black holes? So that's a picture. Um, so this is a picture similar to what we had before. Here's our, uh, here's our space. I'm going to draw a couple of, um, a couple of black holes. So this picture is supposed to represent unentangled. Oh, yes, uh, that, that black one is difficult to see from, from here. Oh, you mean because of the height? OK, can you see this one this much at least? No. Circle's darker. There you go. Oh, it's not a question of the height. It's just the, the chalk? Correct. OK, thank you. So here's this is what unentangled black holes look like. So. Um, Horizon is somehow here, and the, the black holes are this kind of uh, curved regions of space. Can you see if I draw here, or should I move to the other? Uh, no, okay, I'll move over here. Okay, so this is this is a picture for entangled black holes. We draw start out by drawing exactly the same thing. These two holes. Now the picture is that they are connected space um, inside the horizon. So here are the horizons, these are the points of no return. Space inside the horizons, instead of being these two separate regions here, they're connected spatially. That's the difference, that's the geometrical difference between unentangled black holes and entangled black holes. Yep. That's a question? That's a wormhole. So this thing is, is called a wormhole. It's a wormhole um, that connects these two, two regions outside the black hole. Entanglement what? makes them connect like that is the entanglement of the two black holes. How does that happen? Um, well, that's not very well understood. It's not very well understood, for example, what the best way is to form a black hole like this, or exactly what it would look like as you're transitioning between a state like this and a state like this. But it is, it is believed with, with high confidence that if you can prepare a special entangled state of black holes, then regions behind the horizons will be connected by a wormhole. And so that, intuitively, that is the resource. That's the resource that we're supposed to use, the connection uh, between the two black holes. Yeah. Do you know about any of these? Or group? No, <laughs> good. Thank you for asking that question. So in the first part of the talk, I talked about actual black holes. They are amazing and impressive and great. In the this part of the talk, we're not talking about actual physical black holes that exist somewhere and collide and that we can look at with telescopes. What we're looking, what we're thinking about here is the abstract connection between black holes and ordinary quantum mechanical system. And so in ordinary quantum mechanical system, I can form an entangled state of copies. So then we're led to ask the question, what happens if I form an entangled state of two black holes? We don't need to worry about whether that actually exists somewhere in the universe. We don't need to worry about going and finding a pair of entangled black holes or trying to make a pair of black holes. What we're trying to do is understand this connection between black holes and ordinary quantum systems. So for that, it's not important that they actually physically exist somewhere. So I warned you that I'm taking a risk here and explaining why we actually care about this, but that is true. Um, but yeah, you had your hand up? I didn't really answer the question about the information. Um, no, not, not, no, no, it does not. Not, not by itself. There are 
related wormholes that, that help answer that question, but I'm not going to be able to talk about them. Yeah. So is this theoretical? This is theoretical. This is theoretical <laughs> physics. That is what we're doing. Um, that's, that's what it is. Okay, so um, okay, so now I want to explain how you use this wormhole to accomplish quantum teleportation. So for that, I'm going to um, draw, this is even more risky, I'm going to draw for you the actual kinds of space-time diagrams that professional physicists use to describe, uh, describe these kinds of black holes. What we're going to do is we're going to take this case, this situation with these two black holes here, to simplify the geometry a little bit, I'm going to imagine that uh, there's no spatial connection here. The only spatial connection is through the wormhole. What that geometry looks like is the following. Um, okay, so this is a geometry that uh, drawing that people currently at the Aspen Center for Physics make many times a day, although not normally on a uh, in exactly this setting, so not, not quite as well. Okay, so this is a picture of the space time of a black hole with two observers. So, of, of, of these two black holes, so I'm drawing this is a picture of space, this is a picture of space time. So, time goes up here and space goes sideways. And what have we drawn? So what are we drawn? So look at this line here. This line represents is some position at each point in time. What this is, is it's, it's, uh, it's the trajectory through space time of an observer. There's somebody over here, let's say Bob. This is Bob, this is Bob at an early time. This is Bob at a later time, Bob at a later time, later time, later time, later time. If you can look, if you look at this, Trajectory, what you see is that it's kind of curving to the right. Curving to the right, that means is that Bob is, he's, he's accelerating. Bob has a rocket ship attached to him. He's trying to accelerate this way. That's why his line, instead of just, let's say, staying at a given point or moving on a straight line like this, that's why his line here is curving to the right. Okay, so that's one part of the diagram we've explained. That's Bob. Um, over here is Alice. And Alice, is curving to the left. She is also on a rocket ship and her engines are firing the opposite. So Alice is over here, Bob is over here. They're accelerating away from each other. So those are those two lines. Okay, what are the other lines? These squiggly lines, up, this squiggly line up here, this is the singularity inside the black hole. So this region here is the region inside the black hole. So this is the space-time region inside the black hole. Um, this region is also inside. And this squiggly line here is the future singularity of the black hole. What that means, this is the region inside a black hole where space-time ends. Anybody who falls into the black hole will be destroyed at this point. That's the horizon, then. Oh, that's not the horizon. That's the singularity. So the horizon, let's discuss the horizon. What is the horizon? Well, there are actually two horizons. From Bob's perspective, this is the horizon. What that means is if you cross this point, you cross this line, you are doomed to hit the singularity. So the following rule describes these diagrams. The rule is that light rays travel at 45 degrees. So something that moves slower than light would be this kind of trajectory or this kind of trajectory. So these ones are okay. Uh, this kind of trajectory will be moving faster than light and that is not allowed. Any trajectory on this diagram has to move inside 45 degree angle. So suppose we had a somebody over, over here. They're confined move within 45 degrees. So in their future, they're definitely going to hit the singularity. And the dividing line between people who are definitely going to hit the singularity and people who may not is this line here. That's the horizon. It itself is a light ray of the 45 degrees. That's the horizon. And that's the horizon that Bob is trying his best to stay outside of. He's accelerating just enough so he's not going to fall into the black hole. He stopped accelerating, started moving on a straight line, would cross the horizon and hit the singularity. He's firing his rocket ship, just barely hovering outside his black hole. Alice is doing the same thing. She has a different horizon, this one over here. So what this whole space-time actually describes, it describes two black holes. Alice is outside one black hole, firing her rocket engines, trying to move this way. Bob is out his, outside his black hole, firing his rocket engine, trying to move that way. 
And um, so these are two black holes, like we drew here. Two black holes. Alice is over here outside this one, and Bob is over here outside that one. And the uh, geometrical connection, the wormhole that connects them, is just the fact that space connects these two. They're actually quite close together. Alice and Bob, the point of closest approach here, are actually quite close together on the two sides of the horizon. So this is a honest space-time drawing of two entangled black holes. Theoretically, could the entangled black holes be on opposite sides of the universe? Yeah, but yes. I'd say that's a kind of uh, important point. These two black holes, the distance between them here could be extremely large. But the distance between them, if they're in this particular entangled state, the distance between them through the wormhole would be short. So Alice and Bob could be outside what they think are two black holes incredibly far away from each other, incredibly, incredibly far away from each other. If those two black holes happen to be in this particular entangled state, then they, Alice and Bob are actually close together. They're close together through the wormhole. That's this direction here. They're close together, even though the black holes might be, sides of the black holes might be very far apart. Yeah. So information could travel through the wormhole faster than the speed of light. Okay, good. Let's see. Let's see. How do, let's discuss information traveling through the wormhole. So, so far I've discussed the resource that we're supposed to try to use to do quantum teleportation. Resource is this, this space time. Okay, so now let's try to do quantum teleportation. Um, the setup for that is to imagine that Alice has a quantum state that she wants to send to Bob. So Alice has a quantum state. Um, use this, this notation to describe quantum states. She's carrying it with her along on her rocket ship. And um, she knows about quantum teleportation. And she knows that black holes are supposed to represent, tangled black holes are supposed to be some kind of resource you can use to do quantum teleportation. So what does she do? She makes the obvious guess. I want to send this quantum state to Bob. Um, I'm just going to throw it into the black hole. <laughs> Bob is right over there. I'm just going to throw it. Just, hope, just throw it and hope he gets it. And so what she does, she throws it as fast as it can go, which is the speed of light. So it travels on a 45 degree line. I have to draw this kind of carefully. Um, Here's, um, here's the trajectory of the quantum state. She takes it and she throws it into the black hole. And okay, does it make it to Bob? Does Bob receive the quantum state? <laughs> no, he does not. It's not receive the quantum state, this failed. Let's just took her precious quantum state and she threw it into a black hole, bad idea. Uh, the quantum state ends up at the singularity at the end of space. -time. Okay, so that did not work. And the fact that that did not work is very important property of quantum entanglement which is that quantum entanglement by itself cannot be used to send signals. So if you and I share an entangled state, I can't just kind of do something to my copy and have you receive the message. Entanglement by itself does not allow um, uh, signaling. It's kind of a non-trivial property of, of mechanics and of entanglement, and that is represented here by a geometrical fact about the space-time, represented by the fact that, you know, this 45-degree line stays behind that 45 degree line and it doesn't make it out to the other side. So we're seeing here already a hint that some kind of detailed property of quantum systems and of quantum mechanics, you can't send messages with entanglement alone. That is being represented here by space-time, by some property of the space-time geometry. So that's, well, Alice isn't too happy about that because, uh, because of what happened, but for our purposes, this is already interesting. 